scientists and historians to the mysterious Oak Island. The island's mysteries have sparked numerous ideas, explorations and letdowns, adding to its mysterious allure. However, after years of probing, recent discoveries have emerged, offering hope of finally unlocking the island's secrets. Let's uncover the truth. Rick Legina, metal detector expert Gary Drayton, and archaeologist Laird Niven set off on an exciting journey as they venture into Lot 5, located on Oak Island's western side. With the weight of history and the possibility of untold riches hanging in the air, the team sets out to uncover clues that may reveal the island's long-hidden secrets. This is in the past now, mate. To the future. Let's get started. Possible that if there's an ancient treasure, it would have ancient th things in it, including perhaps a component of Roman coins. You have to keep an open mind because facts, as Winston Churchill said, are stubborn things. Here's a fact. We found those coins on Oak Island. That's a fact. For centuries, tales of buried riches and various investigations have attracted treasure hunters. Am I ecstatic over the moon to be able to go dig on a lot that has eluded us? The opportunity for answers? 100%. As they carefully survey the landscape, Legina reflects on the efforts of past owners like Robert Young and Fred Nolan, acknowledging their limitations due to technological constraints. This suggests that valuable items may still lie concealed in the depths of Lot 5. During their investigation, the team makes a remarkable discovery, a coin possibly dating back to the first millennium BC. This finding holds historical significance as it represents one of the earliest methods of producing metal coinage in human history. Known as hammered coinage, this process involved imprinting patterns onto metal blanks using dyes. What sets this discovery apart is its potential age, with the coin possibly being over 500 years old, predating the introduction of coin minting machines in Europe. It's freaking gorgeous, mate. And that ain't no mill coin, mate. No. To me, mate, this looks like an hammered coin. Obviously, it's not a mill coin, it's no. too thin. Mm -hmm. And if it is hammered, mate, it goes way back. That is all. The rarity and significance of such an ancient artifact typically associated with European history, add to the excitement surrounding this find, especially considering its emergence in a distinct geographical setting. Beyond shedding light on ancient monetary systems, the coin raises questions about trade routes, cultural exchanges, and technological achievements of the period. As the team explores its origins and significance, this discovery promises to expand our understanding of early civilizations and their economic practices. Following their find, Legina and Drayton waste no time in bringing the artifact to archaeologists Laird Niven and Emma Culligan for further investigation. Anticipation builds as they await confirmation of the coin's composition, hoping for silver, which would enhance its historical value. Using an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, Emma analyzes the coin's elemental composition, revealing traces of copper, tin, iron, and arsenic. The revelation that the currency is made of arsenical bronze, a copper alloy, adds to its mystery, suggesting an antiquity dating back centuries, possibly to the 1500s. This unexpected discovery opens up new avenues for exploration and sheds light on the island's rich history. The presence of this alloy in the coin indicated a historical time frame consistent with records, particularly around the 16th century. The team's excitement grew as they grasped the significance of their find, a tangible connection to a past era. This revelation had substantial implications. Not only did it offer insights into the material makeup of ancient currency, but it also provided information about past technological advancements and economic structures. This is a type of find that you would pull up in Europe somewhere. And that's what makes it so special. That's treasure, mate. <laughs> that would be. Yeah. Gary and Jack Begley had previously uncovered a significant barter token on adjacent Lot 7, also containing arsenical bronze. Sandy Campbell, a coin specialist, suggested that this token might date back to before the 16th century, making it at least 500 years old. This discovery carried significant weight, hinting at a connection to ancient civilizations and trade practices. With the discovery of arsenical bronze on Lot 5, the team faced an interesting possibility. 
they may have come across another crucial piece of the puzzle in unraveling Oak Island's mysteries. The revelation of arsenical bronze dating as far back as the 1500s was a genuine moment of realization for Rick Legina and the crew, offering the promise of shedding new light on the island's mysterious past. But what did this all signify? The convergence of these findings on lots 5 and 7 hinted at a deeper connection between the artifacts found on Oak Island and the broader historical context of the surrounding area. The discovery of remarkable metals like arsenical bronze sparked intense curiosity about the island's past inhabitants, their activities, and the significance of these artifacts in the larger narrative of Oak Island's mystery. As the team pressed on with their research, driven by curiosity and determination, they recognized the importance of unveiling the secrets hidden within lots 5 and 7. Each discovery brought them closer to unraveling the long-standing mystery of Oak Island. At the Oak Island Interpretive Center, Alex Lagina, Jack Begley, and Emma Culligan eagerly awaited the arrival of numismatist Sandy Campbell. His expertise was essential in assessing a recently discovered cut copper coin unearthed on Lot 5 by Rick Lagina and Gary Drayton just a week earlier. This coin, with its X-ray fluorescence scan suggesting a pre-16th century origin, caught the team's attention. Sandy conducted a closer examination of the coin and detected a trace of silver in its composition, measuring approximately 1.05%. Um, and it also has 1.05% silver in it as well. Which, yeah, I mean, you can get silver naturally occurring with copper, obviously. He explained that silver might naturally accompany copper, influencing the coin's composition and likely age. This discovery solidified their belief that the currency originated from the Roman era. Rick reflected on past expeditions, including a significant journey to Portugal undertaken by himself, Alex, and other team members a year prior. Their mission led them to various sites where the Knights Templar erected fortifications between the 12th and 16th centuries. Among the discoveries were sculptures in Templar chapels bearing a striking resemblance to symbols previously found on Oak Island. One particularly interesting find was a cobblestone road dating back over 2,000 years to the time of the Roman Empire. Remarkably, this road bore a remarkable resemblance to the one unearthed in the Oak Island Marsh by the team in 2020, believed to have Portuguese origins and dating back at least 500 years. The parallels between the Portuguese road and the one on Oak Island were shocking, suggesting potential connections between the two locations spanning centuries of history. This discovery sparked speculation about potential Templar involvement on Oak Island and raised questions about the extent of their influence and activities in the area. Rick Legina couldn't shake the feeling that they were on the brink of a significant breakthrough as he pondered the implications of the Roman coin found on Oak Island and its potential connection to the cobblestone road uncovered in the marsh. The idea that members of the Knights Templar might have transported the currency to the island sparked a flurry of inquiries and theories among the team. The idea of Templar involvement expanded the scope of possibilities, connecting the coin to other fascinating discoveries on Oak Island. Another artifact discovered in 2017 in Smith's Cove, the medieval lead cross might be associated with the Templars. Additionally, the mysterious dam at the north end of the swamp could potentially be linked to Templar engineering efforts. My issue is if this was just dumped by Glacier or something like that, it would be piles. It would be a little less horizontal. You'd see this undulate a bit, but it's straight across. You have to have somebody to do it. In my mind, somebody created a surface. The discovery of significant gold traces in the money pit area deepened the mystery. Additionally, the clear geographical connection between the Roman coin, the cobblestone pathway, and other findings on Oak Island raised questions about their Templar origins. Rick's inquiry echoed the team's collective shock, underscoring the need for further analysis and exploration. Leaving the interpretive center, Rick and Gary eagerly returned to Lot 5 to continue their investigation. Despite owning Lot 5 for only two weeks, their efforts had already yielded remarkable results. Discoveries such as tools and a musket bullet hinted at a pre-16th century presence on the island, offering fascinating glimpses into its ancient history. However, the finding of a hand-forged half-coin sparked particular interest, a potentially significant discovery that could reshape Oak Island's historical narrative. 
With archaeologist Laird Niven's approval, Gary wasted no time in excavating the metal targets they had identified earlier that morning, their excitement growing with each new artifact uncovered. The implications of their discoveries were significant. If indeed they were uncovering evidence of past activities on Lot 5, it raised a host of questions. Who were the individuals responsible for these actions, and what drove them? As Rick and Gary excavated the earth, they recognized the importance of their findings. Each artifact unearthed had the potential to unveil another piece of Oak Island's mysterious puzzle. Continuing their exploration on Lot 5, Rick, Marty, and Gary made another discovery, pottery. Excited by this find, they enlisted archaeologists Laird Niven, Helen Sheldon, and Craig Tester to join them in examining the potentially valuable artifacts. Helen Sheldon took the lead in analyzing the pottery, carefully studying its characteristics. She observed a series of typical patterns indicative of press molding, a technique that emerged around 1740, suggesting a relatively recent origin for the pottery. Further investigation revealed that the ceramic dated back to approximately 1720, adding another layer of complexity to the discovery. There's a series of standard designs. You can actually date the designs. These definitely because of the decoration. Okay. That's called press molded. And this sort of press molding started in 1740. The presence of such pottery on lot five, situated on the island's western edge, sparked curiosity about its origin and purpose. As the team pondered the significance of the pottery, they considered its potential connections to previous findings on the island. The discovery of 18th century English pottery on Lot 5, predating the discovery of the Money Pit by over 50 years, raised fascinating questions about Oak Island's past and its possible associations with individuals or groups of British descent. Building on previous discoveries of 18th century British military artifacts on Oak Island, the finding of English ceramics boosted the theory of British involvement in the island's history. As archaeologists, Laird and Helen welcomed their colleague Miriam Amiralt back to the island. The team planned to dig deeper into the research of the site where the 18th century British artifacts were found. Miriam's expertise would be invaluable in unraveling the mysteries behind these fascinating discoveries. With each new revelation, the team moved closer to unraveling the truth about Oak Island's mysterious past. The finding of 18th century English pottery hinted at a rich history of human presence on the island, leading the researchers to explore the possibility of different layers of human habitation and activity over time. Helen examined the excavation site on Lot 5 and observed a feature filled with rocks alongside early artifacts found within it. What stood out was the absence of modern artifacts among the early ones, suggesting a distinct and isolated layer of historical activity predating the discovery of the money pit. This raised questions about the purpose of the feature and its potential contents. Before the discovery of the money pit, a rock-filled excavation feature indicated deliberate human activity on Oak Island. But what was its intended use? The absence of contemporary artifacts within the feature indicated that it had remained undisturbed, preserving a glimpse into the island's past. As Miriam continued her exploration, she came across a remarkable artifact, a piece of blue and white tin glazed pottery known as Delftware. Laird identified it as English Delftware from the mid 1700s, making it a significant and unusual discovery. That's delicate stuff. We have to be really careful. Wow. Called Delftware. I'm not sure what the starting date for that is. Certainly mid 1700s. So it would be English. Nice. This find was unprecedented on Oak Island and added to the growing collection of interesting artifacts unearthed during the team's investigations. The discovery of tin-glazed pottery and other early artifacts further deepened the mystery surrounding Lot 5. Additionally, the discovery of artifacts dating back to the mid-1700s on Lot 5 marked a crucial moment for the Oak Island crew. Laird explained how this revelation completely changed the game, transporting them back to an unknown era in the island's history. Among the discoveries was a hand-forged copper nail, which fascinated the team. Helen recognized the significance of the nail, linking it to boat building due to its copper composition. Laird further elaborated that copper nails were favored in maritime construction for their resistance to corrosion, a crucial quality for shipbuilding. 
The plethora of ship-related artifacts unearthed by the Oak Island team over the past decade intensified the mystery surrounding the copper nail discovery. Ranging from wood fragments to decking spikes, these findings spanned centuries, from the late 18th century to the early 3rd century AD. The notion of a connection between the copper nail and previously discovered ship-related artifacts opened up new avenues of inquiry for the researchers. It raised questions about Oak Island's role in maritime history and its potential significance as a center for shipbuilding or maritime activity in past eras. Marty Legina emphasized the historical and present importance of Lot 5 in their treasure hunt. The discoveries made on this parcel of land held immense significance for the crew, driving their determination to uncover its secrets. Rick Legina echoed Marty's sentiments, underlining the keen interest in any findings on Lot 5, especially those predating the deposition of artifacts. He stressed the importance of these discoveries in providing clues to the untold history lying beneath Oak Island's surface. The team collectively acknowledged the significance of Lot 5 and the wealth of information it held. Rick indicated that while there were already compelling indications pointing to Oak Island's past, many more mysteries remained concealed beneath, waiting to be revealed. Next, Rick Lagina, accompanied by Oak Island historian Charles Barkhouse and researcher Corjan Mole, set off on a journey approximately 50 miles southwest of Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Their expedition was prompted by a contact named Isaac, who suggested that some carvings in the area might be linked to the mysterious activities on Oak Island. Corjan Mull had been an invaluable member of the team for the past three years, sharing his extensive research findings and serving as a knowledgeable advisor, particularly on international matters. His research had unveiled several potential connections between the Oak Island mystery and the Knights Templar, a Christian military order believed to have possessed sacred religious artifacts from the 11th to 16th centuries. Among Corjan's notable revelations from a year ago in Portugal were several stone engravings discovered within 12th century Templar fortifications, notably at the Church of Fontarcada. The discovery of engravings bearing striking resemblances to those found on Oak Island aroused suspicion and deepened the mystery surrounding potential Templar involvement in the island's history. Corjan's detailed research and knack for identifying similarities across diverse locations propelled the team's exploration efforts, offering glimpses into a narrative spanning continents and centuries. Upon their arrival at the destination, Rick, Charles, and Corjan were warmly welcomed by local landowners Isaac Refuse and Nick Fralick. Rick expressed gratitude for the invitation and the team's eagerness to explore the significance of the symbol discovered on their property. The crew was fascinated by the broadhead emblem found on the premises, which dated back to the 14th century. The broadhead symbol, widely recognized as a stylized representation of an arrowhead, held historical significance as a badge of ownership by either the British government or British nobility. Its presence on items indicated a direct association with the ruling authorities of the time. Given Nova Scotia's complex history as an English possession during the 16th to 18th centuries, the possibility that the carving dates from one of these periods cannot be dismissed. As the team looked into the historical background of the broadhead symbol and its potential implications for Oak Island's mystery, they remained open to the idea that its origins may be traced back to Nova Scotia's colonial eras. Beyond indicating possession, the broadhead emblem served as a common insignia adorning various items purchased by the royalty functioning as a stamp of royal permission for products intended for royal usage or sanctioned purposes. Despite its selective application to certain items and materials, the absence of the symbol from rocks was noteworthy. Its resemblance to a goose paw, a characteristic feature found in European contexts, fascinated the team. Such symbols were often associated with national insignia utilized by organizations like the Knights Templar, leading to further exploration into the Templar's history particularly their involvement in cathedral construction across medieval Europe. The appearance of goosepaw-like emblems in churches across Europe highlighted the Templar's significant influence on architectural endeavors. The possibility that the broadhead symbol originated from a medieval cathedral architect, potentially linked to the Templars, surprised the crew. This finding hinted at a deeper layer of historical mystery surrounding Oak Island suggesting connections to a network of medieval artisans and religious organizations with legacies spanning countries and centuries. As the crew pondered the symbol found on the terrain, 
they considered its significance, imagining themselves as Templars leaving marks of unity. Over the past decade, they carefully explored sites across Nova Scotia, uncovering stone engravings linked to the Templar Order. The discovery of another emblem resembling Templar symbols interested them, sparking further investigation. Marty Legina emphasized the need for more inquiry into the Goose Paw emblem, suggesting it might contain hidden codes. Landowner Isaac presented more engravings, each with fascinating symbols. Speculation arose about their meanings, with one resembling a globus cruciger, symbolizing Christianity's authority. The team dug into investigating ancient sculptures, recognizing their significance. Rick's team's discovery of a sign resembling one found in Portugal raised questions about connections between the two sites. They speculated if these symbols hinted at a larger story, sparking their curiosity. Rick stressed the broader implications of these findings, suggesting they weren't the sole focus of old world travelers. Very intricate. So if there's anything within the province that indicates pre-Columbian visitation to the New World, it's, a, it's of interest to us. And uh, I think these carvings might represent that. The team, including Gary, Rick, Marty, and Peter, explored use dating back thousands of years, becoming crucial tools for large sailing vessels during European exploration of North America. Carmen's insights provided understanding of the importance of the bush scythes found on Lot 26, suggesting their practical use in agriculture or land clearing. Their age, dating back to the mid-1600s, raised interesting questions about their presence on Oak Island, potentially preceding known colonization by over 150 years. The mystery deepened as the crew contemplated who might have brought these ancient artifacts to Oak Island and for what purpose. Rick Legina acknowledged the complexity of Oak Island's history and the challenge of uncovering its secrets, stressing the importance of understanding the various stages of activity on the island, from infrastructure development to deposition and logistical considerations. Each discovery hinted at a broader narrative shaped by the actions of people over many decades. The unearthing of bush scythes dating back to the 1600s added another layer to this narrative, leading the team to reevaluate Oak Island's history and the motivations driving their research. Carmen's assessment underscored the significance of the find, noting that the presence of bush scythes on Oak Island contradicted any known population or settlement in Nova Scotia during that era. The team pondered the necessity of such tools on the island, particularly considering the absence of confirmed human activity nearby. The discovery of not just one, but two bush scythes deepened the mystery, fueling the team's eagerness to uncover further evidence that could unlock the secrets of Oak Island's past. As the investigation on Oak Island advances, each new discovery brings us closer to uncovering the island's ancient mysteries. From the multitude of artifacts found on lots 5 and 26 to the mystery surrounding Templar symbols and various findings including coins, pottery, and bush scythes, each piece of the puzzle adds to the excitement surrounding this captivating treasure hunt. With each revelation, the possibility of finding the long-sought-after treasure becomes more tangible. Yet, the quest for the riches of Oak Island is an ongoing adventure filled with twists, turns, and unexpected surprises. Nevertheless, the crew remains motivated to unearth answers and unravel the puzzles surrounding the island. Lord near the stone well, uncovering an interesting artifact. Their discoveries fueled debates about their implications and the potential for more on Lot 26, once owned by Samuel Ball. The presence of Ball's 18th century homestead added to the mystery. As they considered the significance of their findings, they realized each artifact had the power to rewrite Oak Island's history. The prospect of uncovering the truth was both thrilling and daunting as they dealt with the responsibility of unraveling the island's mysteries while respecting its complex past. As excavation on Lot 26 continued, the team made a significant find, a pipe tamper believed to be the first of its kind found on Oak Island. This looks like a pipe tamper. Back in the day, people would have had tobacco in a pipe. This is nice. And the first one we found on Oak Island. I love a first on Oak yeah. Island. This seemingly modest yet historically important artifact hinted at the island's past visitors who indulged in tobacco. Gary noted the distinctive copper alloy composition of the pipe tamper, adding to its potential significance. Each discovery on Lot 26 held considerable importance as it revealed another aspect of the island's rich history. 
Among the finds was a swing door or gate fastener with ring bolts, suggesting a level of sophistication beyond typical door hardware. Gary highlighted the unexpected nature of these iron artifacts, particularly their association with doors, which was a new revelation. To gain further insights into the origins and significance of these artifacts, Oak Island historian Doug Crowell and Scott Barlow consulted blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg. Meeting at Northville Farm in Centerville, Nova Scotia, Crowell and Barlow presented Legg with artifacts discovered near the ancient stone well on Lot 26. These artifacts, resembling hinges, fascinated the team due to their potential function. As Legg carefully examined the artifacts, the team hoped his expertise would shed light on Oak Island's mysterious past and the significance of the discoveries on Lot 26. Following Carmen's examination, the crew was surprised when he identified the recovered artifacts as broken cutting tools, specifically bush scythes. Bush scythes have a long history of agriculture.